Hi there, I'm Alex from Southern Ukulele Store and I have uh, three very, very cool ukuleles to show you, which means this is an episode of Off The Peg. Off The Peg is the series that you can look back through YouTube where we take three instruments, sometimes random, sometimes with an underlying theme, and we play them back to back and you guys can hear the difference. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you something small, something big, and something weird. I think that's the best kind of episode, don't you? Let's begin today with the Koaloha KSM00. Okay, the first ukulele to look at today is this, the Koaloha KSM00, a traditional Hawaiian koa soprano. If you want to know why people buy Hawaiian koa, you just have to look at the back of this. Look at the wood. I love this kind of wood. Really straight grain koa is the type of koa that I find it compresses the least. It's loud, it's vibrant, and that really describes Koaloha as a brand very, very well. You have this Musubi rice bowl sound hole, as shown before, and you have the five point crown on the headstock with Koaloha's own brand tuners made for them by Dijon. Now, there's some, you know, there's some debate about whether Koaloha should have switched from friction tuners on a soprano. I personally much prefer the geared tuners, but I do see why. Traditionalists out there would like uh, a planetary style or a friction tuner more. Um, if you're wondering if the gear tuners add any weight, not a noticeable amount. I found actually the most um, kind of weight intensive thing on Koalowas in the recent years is the gloss finish, which they switched about five, six years ago back now, which has made them probably a few grams heavier. Not enough to, to worry me. On that headstock, you have an abalone uh, an abalone inlay, really nice. Look at that, the Koaloa inlay. When Popsicami made that logo, he knew, he knew he'd never have to change it. It's so adaptable, it's so clearly a ukulele. It's one of those logos that you just, you want a poster on your bedroom wall. Nothing not to love here, let's give the Koaloa KSM00 a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to take a look at this very unusual bell-shaped Ohana. This is the Ohana SKB35, and I love the flick of the body design. It has an almost, I want to say like an axe-like quality to it, <laughs> but, jo but joking aside, this is based on a design from the mid-1920s from a brand called Leon & Healy. They produced bell-shaped ukuleles that were very popular. There's something about the kind of uh, the kind of northeast and north of the US where different things with the ukulele went on in the 1920s during the first boom after the ukulele initially caught on and it wasn't just Martin and Gibson and later Harmony and lots of other companies that we can talk about another time that you had companies like Leon and Healy I don't know much about that brand I know I know that I've googled bell-shaped ukulele in the past and read a couple of very cool ukulele magazine articles about it I'll put them in the description of this video but yeah the bell-shaped ukulele very very cool very very quirky but retains a normal soprano shape it's all solid mahogany with a rosewood fingerboard and bridge you have the Ohana normal headstock with friction tuners because Ohana do period correct things very, very well. They make very good sopranos that feel like old Martins. And the bell-shaped ukulele is not a new model in the range, but considering this is only the second one of these we've had in 10 years, they're not around that often. Quite unique, quite quirky. Let's give the SKB35 a play.
Last up today, we're going to go from something based on a 1920s design to something ultra modern. This is the Blackbird Farallon. As you can see, it's the sunburst finish under gloss, so it has a real nice dark, kind of an amber burst to it. It has kind of a volcanic burst. What would you call it? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comment section what you would call it. And and the material that it's made out of is a man-made material. This is Ecoa. So when you look at the sides, you don't really see any uh, wood grain type features. But the Ecoa, which is made using plant fibers, linen, and then resin, and then they're baked, it has a Coa-like look to it, hence the name Ecoa. Obviously, Ecoa is a marketing term. It has nothing to do with Coa itself. But when Blackbirds first came out, we were all gawping at just how much they sounded like old instruments. I think actually they sound more like a kind of mango or a mahogany. This particular one has a side pour, which is almost hidden amongst the black on the sides, but you can see in there and it's a really nice opportunity actually, aside from the audio benefits you get hearing the sound come back at you. It's really nice to see actually how these are made, you know, with the synthetic braces inside. It does kind of lift the lid a bit on the manufacturing process of a Blackbird and you see what's going into it. But yeah, there's just not, there's just something cool about the side port on this instrument compared to some of the others. This particular one also has a my size, so the best possible pickup on the market. You can plug it in and play it with a volume and tone control in the sound hole. The neck is made of uh, Ecoa with a rich light fingerboard and bridge. It's a tie-on bridge. And then at the top here, you've got the Blackbird logo with the Goto planetary tuners. So they look traditional, but they are the kind of ultimate ultra modern uh, vintage style tuner. The hollow neck completely transforms the sound. It adds to the resonance and you get a really um, like deep, rich sustain from this ukulele but with absolutely no kind of honky, spiky, nasally frequencies. That's why they pretty much always come with a low G to Southern Ukulele Store because really playing it in high G is robbing it of uh, a real kind of tonal treat on the ears. Yeah, I mean, you're either going to be into the idea of eco or you're not, but every time I feature one of these on the Southern Ukulele Store channel, going back to the early years of the channel, it was always the ukulele that stood out when I was using lesser audio quality equipment, but it's actually been a year or so since I featured one using the newer equipment. So let's give a Blackbird Farrell on a play and see what you think. episode of off there you have it folks that was another episode of off the peg what was your favorite please let us know in the comment section i'd be really grateful if you like the video uh subscribe to the channel do all those things that just help us get found in the wider world of youtube um if you have any questions you can call me on 01202 430820 or email alex at ukulele.co.uk either way hope you've enjoyed today's video have a great day and i'll see you soon